Hi guys, welcome to our second video of presentation on control engineering and uh, this time we are looking at Laplace transform as usual. My name is Motion Marufu and for any communication, the email address motionmarufuskist at gmail.com or you can choose to come via social media platform WhatsApp plus 2637175358866. I hope you are going to enjoy this engineering mathematics uh, topic, Laplace transform. Uh, introduction to Laplace transform and we are saying a linear real-time control system can be replaced uh, with a, a mathematical model and what is the function of this mathematical model it is for the purpose of analysis and this mathematical model will be in the form of a linear differential equation we now want to find the solution of these linear differential equations that are used to describe the control system characteristic and this include the state response as well as the transient response and the solutions are going to be found using Laplace transform because some of the techniques that can be used are quite demanding. So we are saying the, the Laplace transform is used to solve linear constant coefficient differential equations and this is achieved how? By transforming them into abric, uh, algebraic equations. It is easier to or simple to solve algebraic equations. And we are saying the algebraic equations are solved and uh, after finding these solutions, we are going to find the inverse Laplace transform to obtain a solution in terms of the original variables. So in this topic, we are introducing Laplace transform as well as the properties of Laplace uh, transform. What is Laplace transform? It is a method of operational calculus that takes a function in the time domain and convert it into a function of O of a complex variable x. We know or this complex variable x can be real or it can be complex as we will see in the next slide. We can also say we are converting a function in time domain to a function in frequency domain which is also known as the S domain. Why is it that we are attaching some significance to this engineering mathematics of Laplace transform? We are saying it is used to produce transfer functions. I think you remember our next uh, topic of discussion in so far as control engineering is concerned is on transfer functions, which is the ratio of the Laplace transform of the output to the Laplace transform of the input, loosely saying it's gain. So it is, it is a very important topic in control engineering. And we are saying the elements of engineering are represented as block diagrams and we are required to find the transfer function of the control system represented in block diagram form. So the various blocks of the system corresponding to the system of elements are connected together and the result as you will see in, in the chapter on a block diagram is called a block diagram for the whole control system. System. So, if we break down a system in this way, it is much easier to visualize how the various parts of the system interact. And so, a transfer function model is complementary to a time domain model and is a, value, is a valuable way of viewing an engineering control system. So, we will see that these transfer functions are very useful in areas of engineering, but are particularly important in the design of all control systems. So, we are going to use the Laplace, Laplace uh, transform to produce uh, transfer functions of control system. In illustration of Laplace transformation, we are saying we've got a hard problem and we are going to transform it using Laplace transform into an easy problem. So it is easy to find a solution for an easy problem. So after finding solution to the easy problem, we are going to find the inverse Laplace transform of the solution to the easy problem. And by so doing, we would have found the solution to the hard problem. I think you, you will agree with me that it is very easy and shorter to solve differential equations using Laplace uh, transform. And this is what is being illustrated in this flow deck. We are saying let ft be a function of time and in many real problems we consider values 
where t is greater than or equal to zero. And we are saying the function of time is given for time or t is greater than or equal to zero and for all t is less than zero, the function of time is taken to be zero. So we are saying the Laplace transform of f of t, take note we are using a small letter f is capital letter f and this is the Laplace transform parameter s and it is defined by. This is how you define the Laplace transform of a function of t, which is a function of time. And this is its Laplace transform. So this is the Laplace transform of f of t. Or we can safely say the Laplace transform of f of t is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity function of time applied by e to the power negative s t dt. So we are saying to find the Laplace transform of a function, we multiply that particular function by e to the power negative s t. And we find the integral between the limits 0 and infinity is shown. 0 and infinity. So we are saying the term Laplace transform of f t. So we are saying Laplace transform of f t or a function of time can be replaced in or can be written mathematically as the Laplace transform symbol in brackets. You can put these brackets or you can put it the square. It is immaterial. So we are saying the time function f t is obtained from the Laplace transform by a process called the inverse Laplace transform. And this inverse Laplace transform is denoted as Laplace symbol to the power minus 1. So we can say the inverse Laplace transform of this function in square brackets is equal to a function of time. And we are saying these two pairs are called a transform of pair because this is the Laplace transform of f of t is equal to f of s and the inverse Laplace transform of f of s is equal to f of t. This Laplace transform parameter s, this variable s is a complex variable and it is equal to sigma plus j omega. This is a complex um, parameter and we can say it can be real or it can be a complex variable. And we are saying converting a term domain function f of t into an s domain function is known as forward Laplace transformation and uh, converting an s domain function into a time domain function f of t can is called inverse laplace transformation so we are saying the forward laplace transformation is represented by this expression and we are saying laplace transform of a function of time is f of s and this is a capital letter f and we are saying the inverse laplace transformation process is represented by this expression we have found the laplace transform of f of t and its inverse laplace transform can also be written as this this is the, Lap the laplace transform of f of t and we are saying as find its inverse Laplace transform. This is the inverse Laplace transform. So the inverse Laplace transform of this function is equal to f of t. We are saying the lowercase letters with or without a t in parentheses are used to indicate functions of time. For example, f of t, x of t, y of t, or even without you can represent them as f, x, and y. And we are saying the uppercase, the uppercase letters with the s in the parentheses like this are used to indicate the transform functions. Uppercase letters without a T or an S in parentheses are in used to indicate a constant. We are now, so we are now deriving some Laplace transform of some parameters and the first one is x of t is equal to e to the power a t and this is how we define the Laplace transform and we are going to find the, the, the integral from 0 up to infinity so we are going to multiply this our term by e to the power negative s t this is a Laplace transform parameter d t and we are going to manipulate the indices we factored out minus so this becomes becomes positive and this becomes negative and we affect out t and our dt remains. So we are going, we are going, we are now going to find the integral of this term and its integral is e to the power minus in brackets 
this must read let me correct that term guys it's now correct e to the power minus in brackets s minus a t outside the brackets and the values from zero up to infinity and we are now going to replace t by infinity and also by zero subtract to the two please take note of the negative this negative sign is coming from there so we are saying this term will go to zero and this into zero it gives us zero so this minus and this minus become become a plus so we are saying our solution Solution of the Laplace transform of e to the power a t is equals to 1 divided by s minus a. So the inverse Laplace transform of 1 divided by s minus a is e to the power a t is shown by this expression. Also, we are now have got a minus side, we must be able to derive its Laplace transform, and we are going to proceed with the derivation. This is how we define Laplace transform of this parameter. So we are going to find the integral from 0 up to infinity, and we are going to multiply our function by the by this e to the power negative st dt and we are going to manipulate the indices we are going to factor out a minus so if we, if we factor out a minus there in brackets we are going to have s plus a t we have factored it out dt and we are going to replace so first before we do that we are going to find the integral of this term and its integral is e to the power negative s plus a t outside the brackets divided by minus this term is going to divide and the, the limit is zero up to infinity we are going to replace t by infinity and also by zero and subtract the two so you like shown in the square brackets and this is going to give us a zero we've got a minus and a minus they, they are going to give us a plus so the laplace transform of e to the power negative a t is equal to one divided by h plus a and and also take note that the inverse laplace transform of this is equal to e to the power negative a t as shown in this expression please take note that this is defined for when s plus plus a is greater than or equal to zero. going to derive the Laplace transform of a constant in this case Laplace transform of 1 and as usual the integral from 0 to infinity because it is 1 is the same as multiplying 1 by e to the power negative e s t d t and if we find the integral of this term is e to the power negative s t divided by this minus s the limit 0 to infinity if we replace this t with an infinity we are going to get a 0 and this is our minus sign and if we are going to replace this t with the this zero this is going to be one so this term is going to simplify to one divided by s so the inverse laplace transform of one over s is equal to one so whether it is a or b or c the laplace transform of this term is that term divided by s let's find the laplace transform of x of t is equal to sine omega t and this is how you can express the laplace transform but to simplify you find the, the integral from zero to infinity of sine omega t obvious you multiply it by e to negative e s t and d t right but we know that sine omega t equals to e to the power j omega t minus e to the power negative j omega t all over 2j this you must know it from your engineering mathematics so we are going to find the integral from zero up to infinity of this term multiplied by e to the power negative s e negative minus s t d t we are going to take this outside the integral sign so the integral of this term is this term divided by minus minus this term also plus the integral of this term this sign is going to change with this sign they're going to give us a plus sign so the limits from zero up to infinity this term is going to remain if we replace this by infinity sorry i have left something there let me correct it it must read that term so if we, if we simplify what is inside the brackets we are going to have one divided by this term one divided by this term if we find the common denominator this is this term multiplied by this term and this is the same as multiplying the complex conjugates so it simplifies to a squared plus omega squared if you solve this 
if this is going to be your solution. So the Laplace transform of sine omega t squared to omega divided by h squared plus omega squared. Also, please take note the Laplace transform of cos omega t is equal to h divided by h squared plus omega squared. You can do this on your own from the U Guys, we've got what we call standard input signals in control system or even in digital signal processing. And these are the unit impulse signal, unit step signal, the parabolic signal, the exponential function signal. So the unit step signal at t squared to zero is Laplace transform is one over s. The Laplace transform f of the unit impulse signal symbol delta t is equal to one. Please take note the parabolic signal you must be able to find. So it's Laplace transform. Also, these two terms we have discussed. So in case you don't have this table in your examination, make sure you know how to derive this. Make sure you know how to derive the Laplace transform of unit impulse, unit step. Not only a unit, even an, an impulse signal, step signal, parabolic signal, exponential signal, you name it. Another table, continuation rather of the Laplace transform pairs. Please take note of, we have discussed this, we have also discussed this. Please take note of the Laplace transform of this term and also of this term. Never mind the shine alpha t and also the cos alpha t. Laplace transformation rules and the first one is called multiplication or division by a constant rule and our constant in this case is a. So the Laplace transform of a multiplied by a function of t can be expressed as this term. We've multiplied this term by e to the power negative e s t dt and we are going to take a outside the integral sign. So the Laplace transform of a multiplied by a function of t is the same as multiplying a by the Laplace transform of f of t is shown. And please take note that the inverse, not the inverse, the Laplace transform of f of t divided by c is the same, is equal to 1 divided by c multiplied by the Laplace transform of f of t, which is equal to f of s. If it is a sum or a difference of two functions, Laplace transform in brackets f subscript to 1 of t multiplied by f to t. This is the same as finding the Laplace transform of f1 t plus Laplace transform of F2T. Please take note of the rule for finding the Laplace transform of a sum or difference in all of a multiplication or division by a constant. So we are saying the Laplace transform of a function of t plus a function of f of t and also g of t. The, this is how you def express it. Is the integral from zero up to infinity f of t plus g of t and we multiply this term in square brackets by e to the power negative st to find its Laplace transform. This is the same as finding the Laplace transform of f of t plus the Laplace transform of g of t. So this is this is the Laplace transform of f of t and this is the Laplace transform of g of t. T. Please take note. The derivative or the Laplace transform of a derivative, like the Laplace transform of the first derivative, this is the first derivative d dt of f of t is equal to s multiplied by the Laplace transform of f of t minus f at t is equal to zero, where this term, which is equal to this term, is Laplace transform of f of t and a function f at t is equal to zero is the value of the function f t at f t or function of t at t is equal to zero and it is also known as the initial value theorem. So if you've got a a first derivative is take note that is Laplace transform is this. If it is a second derivative, this is is, is Laplace transform. And please take note that f of s is Laplace transform as we saw of f of t and f of zero is the value of the function of t at t equals to zero and, and we call it the initial value. And this term there where t has got a value of zero is, is d dt is derivative is the value of the first derivative of a function at t equals to zero. And for a function with zero initial values, it simplifies to the Laplace transform of d dt of f of t is s multiplied by the derivative of, of a function of t, which is f of s, and we call this the first derivative. This is the second derivative. This is the this is the this is the Laplace transform of the second derivative, which is this. This is the Laplace transform of the first derivative, which is this.
So the Laplace transform of any derivative d to the power n multiplied of d to the power n d t to the power n of f of t is equal to n to the power n multiplied by the derivative of f of t, which is f of s. So this helps us to find the n the Laplace transform of the nth derivative. For the Laplace transform rule for integration of a function, please take note that the Laplace transform of the integral of f of of t dt is equal to the Laplace transform of f of t divided by s. Please take note. Standard test inputs or standard test signals, and we'll be looking at step input, parabolic input, the impulse function. These signals are very important because they are used in evaluating performance of air control system, and it is necessary to assume some standard basic input signals. So we are saying by assuming these standard input signals, not only is a mathematical analysis possible or and also made easy, but also these standard input signals allow us to predict the system's performance to some other complex inputs. So we are going to start the following standard test signals and we we'll start with this step input. You covered this in your digital signal processing and this is how you define it mathematically. Why are we using R of T? This is because our input in control system is normally taken as the reference and the use of R. So we are saying, what is a step input? This is a standard step input signal whose value changes from one position to another position in zero time. It is good. The step function is a function of time which is a zero value before t is equal to zero and a constant value for t greater than or equal to zero. Thus, a step input represents an, in an, inst an instantaneous change like when you turn on the switch the, the voltage jumps from zero to the supply voltage so this is how you define a step input signal r of t is equal to a for t is greater than or equal to zero and for any other value it is equal to zero sorry for it is equal to zero for t is less than zero and we are saying a is a real or constant so you saw in other words r of t is equal to zero for any value less than zero this is a diagrammatic illustration of a step input signal with a magnitude of a and it is r of t is equal to a multiplied by u of t u of t is the symbol for a u, u step input or of a unit signal and this is an illustration of a unit step signal and a is equal to one in this case and we are saying if a is equal to 1, a step input is known as a unit step function and it is denoted by u of t. Mathematically, u of 2 is defined as u of t is equal to 0 for t, is, for t less than or when time is less than 0 and it is equal to 1 for t is greater than or equal to 0 as we can see. It is equal to 1 for t is greater than or equal to 0. Guys, you must be able to find the Laplace transform of a unit step signal. Let me emphasize it. You must be able to find the Laplace transform of a unit step signal. So this is how you find the Laplace transform of a unit step signal. Integral from zero up to infinity of u of t multiplied by e to the power negative s negative s t dt. And if you find the integral of this, this is equals to one divided by minus s multiplied by e to the power negative s t. The limits are up to infinity. If we substitute t by infinity and zero, it is equal to one over s, which is the integral of a constant one, which is this value. So please take note that, take note that if x of t is equal to a multiplied by u of t, its Laplace transform is equal to the Laplace transform of x of t is equal to a divided by s. Please take note, this must be an arrow. This must be an arrow. This must be an arrow. So this is correct. Another standard 
test input signal this is a ramp input this is the graphical illustration of a ramp input as the same applies to this one and a is the slope and we are saying this is a standard input signal which changes linearly with the time as you can see as t is increasing the amplitude is also increasing and we are saying mathematically it is defined as we are referring to this graph x of t is equal to a t for t is greater than or equal to zero but for t is less than equal to zero it is equal to x of t is equal to zero where how do you define a a is a real constant and it is equal to the slope of the line we now want to find its laplace transform its laplace transform is stated as this and the the integral of this term is equal to this plus this and it is equal to a divided by a squared so we are saying the laplace transform of an RAM signal A of T is equal to A divided by A squared. And if A is equal to 1, then the RAM signal is known as a unit RAM signal. Guys, take note, you must be able to find the Laplace transform of a RAM input test signal. Parabolic signal. What is a parabolic signal? This is a standard input signal in which the instantaneous signal value varies with the square of time from an initial value of zero at time t is equal to zero. It is also known as the abstraction input. Please take note, and this is the graphical illustration. This is the mathematical definition, and it is defined for t greater than or equal to zero. Otherwise, it is equal to zero, and a is a real constant. Please take note of the Laplace transform of of the parabolic signal. It is to a divided by a, s to the power of 3. The last standard test input signal that we are going to discuss in control engineering is called impulse response and this is the graphical illustration and how do you define it mathematically? x of t is equal to a delta t for t is equal to 0. In other words, it is a standard input signal whose value is 0 except at t is equal to 0. So at t is equal to 0, uh, the impulse response is not equal to zero. It is generally called the delta function and this is the symbol. So mathematically, this is the definition. It's Laplace transform, please take note that it is equal to one. And this is how you go about it. So we are saying if A is one, it is known as the unit impulse signal and A will be equal to one. Note that the area of the impulse is nothing but magnitude of the impulse signal. A table of mathematical definitions and the Laplace transform. We are going to have a look now at partial fraction expansion of Laplace transform of f of t, which is this expression. And we are going to look at first, we are going to look first at a general case, and we've got this function, which is equal to p of s divided by q of s and this is the laplace transform of the function and we are saying we are going to expand the bracket and it is going to be s plus 1 multiplied by s plus 5 and we are going to express it as a divided by this plus p divided by this and how are we going to proceed we are going to find the common denominator there and divide this and we are going to end up with an expression like this and what are we going to do? We are going to equate the coefficients. Equating the terms of both sides corresponding to s, corresponding to s and the constant term, we get a plus b equals to 1 and 5a plus b equals to 0. And if we solve the two simultaneous equations, we are going to find a equals to minus quarter. Guys, can you prove this and b equals to 5 over 4? So this is going to be our expression. So if we find the inverse Laplace, transform it is going to be equal to this please take note and can you solve this and see if this is correct and another case where the roots of q of s are real and unequal and the equation can be rewritten as this in a partial fraction form a divided we are going to expand this uh, this is because a divided by s plus 1, s plus 5. We are going to use the cover up method, it's the simplest method to use. So, how are we going to find a? We are going to multiply this by s plus 1, and we are going to do that throughout, and we are going to substitute s for minus 1. So, the 
the left side is going to be a is equal to s plus 1 multiplied by this expression with the denominator expanded and it is going to this is going to sorry this rather is going to cancel with this term which is in the denominator of this expression which is this expression expanded or factorized rather so for s is equal to minus 1, we're going to replace s by minus 1, and so our a is equal to b minus 1 quarter. For b, this is our b, using the cover-up method, we are going to multiply throughout by s plus 5, this is going to simplify to b, and we are going to multiply also this side by s plus 5, this is going to multiply by this term there, with the denominator factorized. So, but we are going to substitute s4 minus 5. So, if we substitute this minus 5 minus 5, our b is going to be 5 and a quarter. So, the inverse Laplace transform of this is, is this expression, as in the previous expression. Let's go to the previous expression and see if the term is the same. Yes, it's the same term. So, guys, the cover-up method is a bit shorter than the method of equating coefficients, but you can choose one which we can, you can choose the one you prefer or the one that is easier for you. I prefer the cover-up method, so it will be the one I'll be using. And this time we've got this expression. Please take note of this tricky situation. X plus 1 squared. And how are you going to proceed? You're going to express this in partial fraction form and it is going to be equal to this expression. So we are going to find A, B and C. I'll start with the simplest which is, is C. And we are going to multiply throughout by S plus 3. So this term is going to be multiplied by S plus 3 and it is going to simplify to this term. Please take note that uh, this is for s is equal to minus 3. And if we substitute this in this expression, you will see that your c is equal to minus 3 over 4. You can try using the methods of equating coefficients, but it is a tiresome. For b, please take note, you are going to multiply throughout by s plus 1 squared. But please take note that this must be differentiated with respect to s, and this is going to simplify to this expression. Please take note that because we have got a 1 there, we are going to substitute minus 1 for s and it is going to simplify to 3 quarters. So you can, there are many methods of solving this for a. And please take note that for b, it's, it's simple. This is going to simplify to minus a half. This is going to simplify my minus half. So if we proceed to the next slide, you will see the solution. Uh, from the previous slide, so our a is equal to 3 quarters, b minus half, and c is equal to, we have substituted and we find the inverse Laplace transform, this is equal to this term. We are now going to look at a scenario whereby the roots are complex, and this is the expression, if you expand or if you express it in a partial fraction, it is going to be a divided by this, b divided by this, using the cover-up method, we are going to multiply by this term, which is this term, and this term is this term. Please take note, f of s is equal to this term. So if you simplify this, but please take note that you, you are going to substitute for <coughs> s is equal to minus 1 minus j, as shown, and your term is going to simplify to a is equals to half j, same applies to b, your b is equals to b is equal to minus half j. Please take note to what happens if if we move j from the denominator to the numerator, there is a change in sign. Hence, this j was on the denominator, hence the change in the sign. So, if you are going to replace a and B, this is going to be our term. And if we take the inverse Laplace transform, this is going to be our solution. Guys, revise your Laplace transform.
Let's find the Laplace transform of this differential equation. Please take note that we have got d two x naught divided by d t squared. This is equal to this. This three d d t of x naught is equal to this, and the Laplace transform of this equation is equal to this. So what are we going to do? We are going to arrange like terms together and factor out. We are going to factor out this term, and this is the term we are going to solve this, and we are going to get this. Guys, can you prove whether this is correct or wrong? Then we are going to make x naught of x the subject of the formula by defining by this expression. So this is the Laplace transform of this differential equation. We are, we are now revisiting the initial value theorem. And we are saying the current through in RL circuit, guys, we are revisiting RL, RLC, and RC circuits. When subjected to an applied voltage is given by this equation. In it, when we do transfer functions, we are going to look at this. Please take note that this is a Laplace transform of current. And we are saying E is equals to S in brackets SL plus R. And we are going where E is equal to battery voltage and is 10 volts. R is equals to resistance 100 ohms and L is equals to series in 10 milliamps and the question goes determine the instantaneous value of current immediately after the application of a voltage assume that voltage assume that before the voltage was applied there was no current from in the circuit and that there was no magnetic field uh, present across the coil this will help, this will help you to maneuver and we are saying the solution is because you are given the plus transform of current the initial value of current can obtain simply by applying the initial value theorem guys revisit the initial value theorem and we are saying initial value current at t is equals to an increase in in time from zero zero plus we are saying our s is going to approach infinity take note of your initial value theorem is this is the laplace transform and this is the laplace transform of current and this is going to we are going to proceed we are going to substitute this is equal to this and Please take note that our S is going to, uh, please, I've made an error there. Let me correct it. There is an S thing for this S. So these two are going to cancel and this is going to remain. And if this approach is infinity, it means that the, this divided into this is going to give us zero. And please take note of this important comment. This is the expected result because inductance offers almost an infinite resistance to current build up from zero value. In other words, we are saying at T is equals to zero, there is no current flow through the inductor because of the induced back EMF. Final value theorem, this is the formula for finding the final value theorem. Final value theorem is also known as the steady state value. We'll be looking at it when we mm, discuss time domain response of control systems. So this is our, this is the, the, the Laplace transform of the current flowing in the circuit. And we are saying, please take note when T approaches infinity, S approaches zero. So we are saying this theorem is useful in determining the final value or the steady state of the function function of t from function of s without finding the Laplace or the inverse Laplace transformation. So we are going to say final value equals to limit as s approaches infinity, which is this expression, and this is our our current, which is this current. And we are saying this cancel and as s approaches zero, this is going to approach zero. So the final state value of current is e divided by r because the the magnetic field would have been reduced to zero, hence the final value of current is e divided by R. You can have a repeat of your electrical engineering technology or circuit a theory on a transients, and this is equal to 0, 0,1 amps. This is for you, and ignore it at your own peril. We've got an RLC circuit and we are saying a resistor capacitor inductor are connected in series. A DC voltage at 20 volts is applied through a battery with a low internal impedance or low internal resistance. The current I in the circuit is given by the following differential equation and all initial conditions are zero. That is, at T equals to zero, there's no magnetic field across the inductor, no charge on the capacitor and no current through the resistor. Question goes, determine a general expression for current which is valid for all values of time greater than or equal to zero seconds. Below is the circuit diagram. Guys, do this. If, however, you feel like you, you want a feedback from me, if you solve this and you come via WhatsApp, I will help you.
but as I said, ignore this at your own peril. Otherwise, this is was our last slide on Laplace transform. Means I emphasized, guys, you must know your Laplace transform because these are typical exam questions. Until then, guys, bye for now. Let's meet in our next video presentation on transfer functions. And this is where control engineering is going to begin. Bye.